Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. <laughs> morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building, Jocelyn. What up? Princess. What's up? Chilling or fly? Thank you. It's so cold. It's cold. It's cold. How do people live in New York? I know. You have to, you're like, I can't wait to get back to Miami. Well, I love this place, though. I really do love New York. I'm going to get a place here. Really? Yes, I love this place. My right, fa- I got how- family here. You going to do hip-hop New York, too? Love hip-hop New York. You did Miami, <laughs> Atlanta, now New York. Jocelyn Scabaret, baby. <laughs> Jocelyn Scabaret. Let me see how New York you are, though. What neighborhood? Like, where would you live? Which borough? The Bronx. Well, my, yeah, my I have some family in the Bronx, mm-hmm. Puerto Rican. Mm-hmm. Um, so my all cousins, Puerto Ricans live in New York. My cousins Bronx. are there, actually. I have a lot of cousins and aunties there. Okay, so you would move to the Bronx, you think? Uh, I don't know. I, I kind of like it. My, you know, I, I have family in Philadelphia, too. I kind of like it where it's more quiet, so mm-hmm. I don't know. Philly's kind of far. It'd be like an hour and a half it's drive. like an hour and a half, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know, but I do love New York. I, I'll probably end up getting, so, I'll get something in Manhattan. Like a nice apartment. In the okay. City. Yeah, okay. in the city, something sexy where I could walk through and you could see all the windows open and you could see my sexy body wear a thong <laughs> and you know oh my some heels, some thigh high boots and a you know and a trench coat. <laughs> right. You hear that money talking, right? Because she is on three shows. You have your own show, Jocelyn is Cabaret. Jocelyn is Cabaret. On Zeus. On, on Zeus. Zeus Network. Zeus on Network. Zeus. 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 Everybody's like, it's with the Z, girl. Zeus. <laughs> Zeus. Zeus. <laughs> now, why did you go back to Love and Hip Hop? I thought you weren't Wait, doing can we talk more. about her show first? Because clearly... We're too, because I seen her... She just Zeus. started talking about the Zeus right, Network. Right. Let her talk about her show. She just said she made a bunch of money, and I was curious to why she go back. But let's talk about Zeus. <laughs> well, um, okay, the cabaret, Jocelyn's cabaret. So, Jocelyn's cabaret, um, the way I... Let me just tell you this. I've been writing Jocelyn's cabaret for like five years. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it just, you know, came together with Zeus Network. Uh, shout out to Lemmy that helped me put it together. He's the CEO of the network. Um, but he really understood my vision. So basically, I just got, what I did was like, when I left Love & Hip Hop, um, of course, it was a lot of TV networks interested in me. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? What are you going to do? What are you going to do moving forward? But I felt like I needed to do something like where I came from, mm-hmm. right? And so, yeah, my life is cool, of course. I got a cool daughter. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm crazy. I have fun. But then what, mm-hmm. right? And so I like to give back. I really thought it was just a good idea to do this cabaret, Jocelyn's Cabaret. Of course, I make music. I've been making music for 10 years now. So putting the music together with the cabaret and the ladies in my life and just building a nice story storyline around that, mm-hmm. I just thought it was fucking genius. And, and, and it is. It is. And so it was one of those things where I just figured, like, why not bring my real lifestyle, which is coming from the strip club, mm-hmm. right, and putting it together. And I have, like, some of the story, some of the stories on this, on Johnson and Scabaret is something to really look at. Because some of these ladies are prostitutes. Some of them are strippers. Mm-hmm. But there are mothers. Mm-hmm. There are uh, daughters. There are sisters. They're good people. They have talent. Mm-hmm. They want to do other things. And so to be able to shine the light on that type of the lifestyle, which is like, quote unquote, the streets, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With the strippers and the prostitutes and everything like that. And the men that come in the club. It's just pretty It's pretty cool to be able to run my own cabaret. And so, to name got, it. so are you running a cabaret? Do you own I'm a cabaret? I'm running my cabaret. I'm yeah. running my own cabaret. I What I did was... Strip I, club, I, meaning? Yeah, well, well, I partnered up with the strip club, G5, mm-hmm. in, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. in Miami. Mm-hmm. I've been but, to G5 a few times. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's another side to G5. So oh, it's okay. like two sides. It's two sides. So I use the other side. Mm-hmm. And what I'm, what I'm doing is, what I have the girls doing is really practicing to my music. I have a new song set called Sex Drive. Uh, written by Lunch Money, EST. Oh, shout out to Lunch Money. Shout out to Lunch. And produced by Ballistic. Uh, and so that's yeah, boo, like, why you can't shout out Ballistic? Why you just went over that so fast? Ballistic, I said shout out to Ballistic, my baby. Okay, <laughs> then you got to say it a little more enthusiastically. <laughs> but um, uh, so we, so I got them using that song. So we started with that song. So the girls really want to transition. They mm-hmm. want to do other things. And they could, they could really dance. Mm-hmm. These girls have real talent. So you're teaching so, them how to dance. Well, I'm teaching them how to choreograph right and okay. instead of taking to take their, it to the next level take it to the next level it's mm-hmm. a real actual cabaret we're just using my music right produced by some of the best people in the industry mm-hmm. produced i feel by, like cabaret for people doesn't have the same like strip club like, i'm confused see. like what's the difference between the cabaret i'm, I'm confused well I, the, you know the cabaret you know i teach my girls how to really you know sell a fantasy so mm-hmm. like what is like cirque de soleil you can you can you can you can say that. It's, it's kind of like candy. It's, it's, it's man. It's man. It's like prepare to come see a show. Okay. They have a lot of cabaret in New York. Mm-hmm. Like you, you're gonna go see a beautiful, beautiful ladies. Mm-hmm. You're gonna go see the main girl, which is me. Okay. And then you have the other girls. 
you know, joining me. So you perform me. as well? Of course I perform. Okay. <laughs> uh, we don't get naked, though, you know? We don't right. get naked, you mm-hmm. know? So we just we just have a lot of fun with performing. We allure the men. And, we, and you know, it's a way to make lots of money. Um, Do they throw singles, too? Because in New York, they don't get naked either. But they, no. They, no singles. So. No, 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 so no singles. You, you, you pay to get in. You have show. to have a membership to come and join the cabaret, though. If you want to come see the cabaret, shit. yeah, it's some classic shit. You really got to jo- have a membership. Some classic shit. It's some classy <laughs> shit. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. There's a misconception for people that, because you said there's strippers and there's prostitutes, people always seem to think that strippers will prostitute if they have to. But I know a lot of strippers who have never participated in any of that. so I think everybody sell a little box every now and again. You think so? I mean, That's listen, prostitution. Listen, I think everybody sell a little box every <laughs> now and again. But what I do could tell you, when you are trying to, when if listen, if you're a stripper and you want to get your money, hey, do you, right? Mm-hmm. I know a lot of strippers that want to change their lives. Mm-hmm. They don't no longer want to take their clothes off or sell no box, right. you know? And so that's why the cabaret is so important because you can actually still be your sexy self but you ain't got to do all that. You know, you could just, it's, it's, it's beauty. It's an illusion. It's Vegas. It's just, it's just beautiful woman dancing to a certain song and performing for the man. That's going to, you're going to make lots of money. And it's being filmed and put on national TV following their real storylines with their lives and everything like that. Because we didn't only shoot inside of the cabaret. Mm-hmm. We actually shot like, you know, like out in the club. We went to the club. We hung that. We went to restaurants. Mm-hmm. We went to some of the girls' houses. Like we shot a lot of places. We shot at my house, of mm-hmm. course. So we, we shot, you know, we shot different places and we followed these certain storylines, of course, with my main storyline. But it's just, it's just, uh, and some of the pimps, some of the pimps got on the show. Damn. And they talked. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty the cool. because Yes. So the pimps yeah. are- oh, shit. Should I call the managers? <laughs> oh, shit. I fucked up. Managers. Some of the, ma- some of the managers got on that. <laughs> the managers sound better than pimps. Like, I was like, I'm man. Like, pimps are like, damn. Yeah, some, of the manager, some of the managers got on the, on, you know, on the show, and they, and they kind of explain. Okay. They kind of explain the game. Because a lot of people don't, don't get it. You know, a lot of people just, they like to judge, but... Until you know these ladies and these men and the... Because, you know, a lot of these girls, you know, the way I see it with their management, mm-hmm. you know, management. the way I see it, it's like it's like a relationship. It's like a marriage, right? Mm-hmm. It's like they're married to each other. They have an understanding, mm-hmm. right? They just don't have that paperwork where they sign on the dotted line. But it's almost, to me, when I see this, like... Because, you know, I created this show and executive produced the show. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm in the show. I own the show. I mean that... I'm not only acting in the show I'm producing I'm writing storylines I'm you know I'm teaching the girls how to be the best reality superstars they could be by giving them direction on how to do it using their own personalities their mm-hmm. own way of being are these managers good guys because they're great guys they, I promise you they're not great guys not if you call them a pimp no well listen that, I, that has a bad they're calling me a pimp since I've got the cabaret <laughs> okay they're like Jocelyn is you pimping I'm like no I'm helping you know so I think that Spoken we... like a pimp, Jocelyn. Yeah, that is, that is yeah, she, That's pimp language right there. <laughs> no, 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 listen, listen. I'm going to tell you like this. These guys are awesome. Actually, I met a couple of them, and I had one on the set that came to bless me with his presence to film. He's actually friends with ballistics. Mm-hmm. But the other guy, he didn't come film, but he's such an awesome guy. Like, I talked to these guys on the FaceTime, and it's unbelievable. And I could see why the girls want to give them everything. Right. I could see why these ladies are like, I would do <laughs> anything for you, daddy, anything you want. Because, like, when you talk to these guys, these guys are so suave. Right, they're mm-hmm. smooth with it. That's yeah. how they... But are you yeah. teaching these girls not to do some of the stuff that, like, you might have done that you'd be like, damn, I shouldn't have done that? Because you, you talk about the prostitution stuff, and these girls are prostitutes. You talk about the pimps and all that stuff. But you didn't have a pimp, did you? I used to be a stripper, and I ran my own organization. But I, but I've had a lot of girls work up under me before I had the cabaret. But you didn't beat them up for not doing stuff because that when well, people when pimps, had, that's what you think of. Well, when I had girls, when I went, when I used to be a stripper back in the days, and I had some of the girls work up under me, I kind of taught them the same thing that I'm teaching the girls now at the cabaret. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for me, it was a little bit. Str- it was mm-hmm. it was it was a stressful business mm-hmm. to get into that type of business. Right. So I never really indulged in it. Um, but what I am teaching them is that there is a way out. Okay, that's important. That's what I am teaching them, that you can find a way out. Mm-hmm. You don't have to take your clothes off. You can use your mind to make some money. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these girls, don't, that's why I got the Puerto Rican Princess Foundation, because the foundation is all about giving back to the youth. Mm-hmm. Because I, I ran away when I was 14 years old, right? Mm-hmm. And so I, I took care of myself my whole life. And so when I see some of these girls and when I see myself, them, if I would have had it, some guidance, I would have turned out to be a scientist. My daughter's into science. Mm-hmm. She goes to the science museum all the time. She wakes up like, I want science, mommy, and be up at <laughs> nighttime like thinking about what she's going to build dope. in the morning. And I'm like, girl, relax, go to sleep. I wake up in the morning, you would think about it. But 
I would have been definitely doing something different. So I, I want to help these young ladies. And I think that us as, you know, others, Puerto Rican, I'm Puerto Rican. I'm a black Puerto Rican. Me as being a black Puerto Rican, like, shit, I want to help as many people like me that I can to mm-hmm. let them know if you just turn that old switch off and turn the new one on, you could become a new person. Now, and- I saw on the blog, so they did put out, like, a trailer for the show. And then I saw Waka and T.I. in the comments. And... They were acting like, you know, it's, there's some arguing going on between the ladies. What, what, what did they say in the comments? I'm trying to I seen, remember exactly I seen Jocelyn what he said. arguing with, with uh, a couple of strippers, but what, what, what did they say in the um, comments? It's something like, we need something more positive or something like I don't remember exactly what it was. But you know what? Shout out shout out to um, to Tammy. Uh, you know, that's, the trailer is the trailer. Right. You have to get to see the storyline to really see what the show is about. You know, so... The trailer only we can only show you but so much. You wouldn't right? reel them in with the trailer. Well, not not necessarily. There are some emotional things on the trailer. Like it, I was with one of the girls that she worked the streets. Shout out to Jay three hundred four in the house. Shout out to three hundred four. But but um, it was emotional. You know, she was really telling you the story about her and her family and how she grew up and she was adopted. And people just don't get right. how people get to this level. The reason I'm doing this show is too. Give him another way. You can say whatever the fuck you want, but what you cannot say is that I'm not putting these ladies up to set themselves up. I was put in a place where I set myself up. Now, if you take advantage of setting your shit up, that's on you. If you don't take advantage of that, mm-hmm. that's on you too. So, you know, if 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 Walker think whatever he wants to think, you know what I'm saying? I I, I feel like by the third episode, he'll like he'll, he'll change his mind. Don't judge it from just that, the trailer. Yeah, he'll change his mind by the third episode. Now you also mentioned that uh, like stripper cell box, right? Uh huh. You think all stripper cell box? You can't I, say all of them. That's- I, I, I don't feel like they all sell box. I feel like us as women, whether we strip or not, if we want to have sex with a guy, we'll have sex with a guy. We'll right. give up the box. But you ain't got you, you ain't selling it. You ain't... No, if you like a guy, you know how... I, I don't care if the girl is a prostitute or a stripper. If she like a guy, she going to give that box up Correct. for free. Right. right, right. Bottom line. She uh, prostitution is more like, you pay me, but I don't even like you. And I don't I'm even just- like you. <laughs> yeah, I ain't fucking you and all of that. And right. you, yeah, I mean, you ain't married, man. You've yes. been married for how many years? 18. Okay. You've been married 18 years, and guess what? You still buy your wife things every day. You want to keep your wife happy. Correct. You want to make her smile. Right. You want her to make sure she gets sexy for you. Right. Right? You buy her Absolutely. things to get sexy for you. Right. So whether you're a married woman or a single woman, right, mm-hmm. we want that feeling. Mm-hmm. So we, you know, if you like a man and you and you love a man and you like that person, you know, that feeling is what you want to do. But if I don't buy her Birkin, she's still going to make me feel nice and all well, that other stuff. You guys been married for 19 years. 18. 18 years. Yes. And, and and you guys was there before you guys had all the money, too. Correct. So if you're, so if that's your boy, different. If your man right now, right, had no money, you Ballistic. would still treat him the same, right? I treat my man the same all the time because See? I'm with him because I care for him. Correct. And I'm with him because, of course, I know where he's going to be at his potential and where he's at now. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think that all ladies, strippers or not, we have to get to that decision where, like, I choose this man, I choose that person. And I'm going to stick to it. Now, hold your hand up for a second. Is that an engagement ring and a wedding ring? Girl. What? <laughs> I'm just asking. <laughs> no, I didn't get married. I didn't get married Are yet. Are you sure? Because it hold said up. you might have gotten married already. Engagement. Hold up. I ain't, listen, I ain't get married. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. Right there. <laughs> Congratulations. When do we get to see those wedding pictures? Well, listen, I want you... Well, we, it's You're in- stuttering now, Jocelyn, and you don't stutter. You're stuttering. You're stuttering. Puerto Rican princess is stuttering. <laughs> yeah, I got me. No, um, I think that, I think that you know, I think you'll get to see a little bit more of that storyline on Jocelyn's camera, right? Because we, we dabbled in that quite a few. But I'm in a happy space. Mm-hmm. Well, how's marriage I, life? Well, I tell you this. <laughs> I tell you this. Being in a relationship life, mm-hmm. you know all too well with the kids and the wife, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's, it's something that you have to work out every day. Absolutely. And you got to want to be in it. Because mm-hmm. if you know, you fucked. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's where I'm at with it. Like, you know, I'm in a good place. And, I, and you know, my, my, my partner, he really just helps me with everything I need. And he also wants to make sure that you focus on your music and not just the cabaret. And that's a difficult balance, too, right? Because he's he's said to you, don't lose track of what it is that you really love as well. You know, Angelique, for me, at this point, I really had to realize that I could make money doing anything I want, right? Mm-hmm. And then I also had to realize that I have to focus on the things that I like. And he's right. He's right. And since he's been around, I've been focusing on the things that I like to do, which is music. Mm-hmm. And 
being able to do that, but also knowing that if I really like to do music, I have to just do that, mm -hmm. right? I think that that has put me in a better place too because I'm able to do the things that I want to do and I don't have to necessarily scream about it or talk about it. I just do it. Right. Because with the music or with the TV or anything that is going to make you be really successful and huge and big, it's not your plan. It's God's time. Okay. You know? But, so, you still, but you have to work hard at it still. But you have to work hard, hard at it. So I've been in the studio every day. I mean, I've been in the studio. Uh, shout out to everybody I've been in the studio with. And, you know, those guys, EST and Lunch Money and Ballistic and Miss Betty. And um, who else? I mean, I just, I've just i been in the studio lately. Um, they they really been helping me with just my sound and who I want to be as an artist. Okay. And I think with being an artist, too, especially for me, because I did start doing Spanish music before I was doing any English music. Mm -hmm. Um you just have to really know what you want to put out and give the people and let the people hear. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of audiences that just put anything out. Mm -hmm. You don't know what the fuck they're saying. <laughs> it's like, the beat is nice, but what the fuck you talking about? Right. You know? So you need so for me, substance. I, 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 yeah, I'm in, I'm in a place where I'm picking songs up and I'm doing things and things that I like to do. And also, I'm in a place where like the people that follow me, that, that wants to hear my music, they know exactly where to find it at. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And so... That's all I care about now, and that has put me in a great place because I no longer just need to be on the radio. I no longer just need to do certain things to make me feel good about myself. If I make the music that the people that follow me, they, they if they want to hear it, they're going to find it. Right. right. You do what you like. Yeah, I do what I like. So I'm in a place where I'm happy because I can do the cabaret. I can put the music in the cabaret. I can focus on me, the music, the dancers, and put this big show together that I've had in my mind for so many years and I could do it on my own time, and I don't have to explain to anybody why this or why that. Now, let me ask you this. Having your own show, producing your own show, did that make you understand Mona Scott more? Because before, it was no more love and hip-hop. You hated Mona. You had issues with Mona. Now these girls are but now you, you have like your you own Mona. show. So did that make you say, okay, maybe Mona was in a difficult situation being an executive producer? Or Mona was about her money, and I'm about my money now, like, too. How does that make you view Mona now? Well, I'm a lot different from the Mona. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you different? Let me hear this one. I'm a lot different from La Mona. <laughs> and the reason why I'm a lot different is because with me, I've, you know, if you're from Florida, you know what I'm speaking about. It's a lot of cultures in Florida, different cultures. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you got the Haitians, you got the Puerto Ricans, you got the Cubans, you got the Dominicans, you got a lot of different people. And we all think and act different, right? Mm -hmm. right? And so for me, I'm not in her culture. Her culture is different from mine. Mm -hmm. So automatically, our energy and the way we think and the way we do things is different. Mm -hmm. You can't compare us. Um, I know for a fact that I am way different from, from her being a producer and, bring, and being, a, being a creator. First of all, let's just get this clear. She never created anything. Never created anything. What you mean? Oh, I love and hip hop. I love and hip hop. Anything that was created there, you know, it's three names that were involved in that, and she won one of them. And she said she's a talent scout. She scouts talents. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay, I always look so at that show like she, that was Mona's show. No, that's VH1 shows. VH1 owns well, the show. Okay. She don't own the show. I own Johnson and Scabber, right? Mm -hmm. VH1 owns. Love and hip hop. So who wanted you to come? Did you want to go back to Love and Hip Hop or did they ask you, know, you to come actually, back? You know, can I just tell you this? I went back to do a few. I did a few cameos. I, I popped in and popped out. They gave me a great bag just to pop in and pop out. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I really did it. I really just, did my, you know, my baby daddy called me. I was like, listen, <laughs> you know, they all, you know what I'm saying? Like, just. They got a bag. Let's get this bag. Let's go ahead. Get out. So I did a couple of things. I did a couple of a couple of pops in and pop out. But, you know, anywhere I pop in and pop out, it's going to be fucking great. So they're making a big deal about it. But, like, really. There is nothing that I could possibly do for them because I don't own the shit, mm -hmm. you know? So they know if I don't step foot back in there, they're going to go down, you know? And I kind of did it. I kind of did it to fuck with them. I kind of just did a pop-up or two just to fuck with them to to <laughs> to, to alter their ratings because mm -hmm. I wanted that that alteration on the in that rating sheet to go like this, mm -hmm. you know, just to... So when you pop up, the ratings go up, and then when you pop out, back down. Back down. <laughs> you know, and I and, and and I could be a little bitch sometimes. I did it on purpose. You mm -hmm. know, I, I did that. I show my ass. You know, uh, cause cause my main focus is Jocelyn's cabaret, and anything that I own is what the focus is going to be on. And so, did you feel like doing that was a good way to bring more attention to your show? I feel like doing that was just because I was on my shit. <laughs> Let me get that bag. 
Fuck y'all kiss my ass, blow me up. Poor ballistic man. <laughs> blow me the fuck up. I feel sorry for ballistic Why? man. Why? Ballistic? No, I, Chad, you never be feeling sorry for me. <laughs> Put ballistic on the mic, man. Can, can we get ballistic on? Get on that mic, ballistic. I thought y'all okay. was married already. How are you? Man, listen. He I, said that's his wife. Yeah, like, listen, <laughs> I, y'all need to be feeling sorry for me. <laughs> Don't let Melissa. Well, we're gonna, we we gonna see about all of that. Goodness gracious. We're gonna see about all of that on marriage. How was an argument with you and Ballistic go? How did oh, that happen? Boy. There's no. There's really not. No he got to stand down. <laughs> yeah, he got to stand down. Yeah, I, I pretty much just shut up. <laughs> That's after, a married man few, right there. Yeah, you learn fast. minutes and stuff. I, if she starts getting more crazy, I'm like, you know what? Shut up, baby. <laughs> now, how did y'all even get together in the first place? In the studio. Mm-hmm. I met him at his studio. I was really looking for songs to do the cabaret. And I end up, somebody ended up taking me to his music studio two years ago. Mm-hmm. And who liked who first? Well, she was she was sitting out in the car with Bella. And and uh, her homegirl came in and, and she was like, you know, Jocelyn's in the car. And I'm like, why is she ain't coming in? And she's like, ah, oh, she don't she don't want to come in. She said something like that. So I was like, you know what, fuck her. Let her sit in the car. Damn. Close to the mic, yep. Let her sit in the car, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fuck her, shit. whatever. So I got back to work, <laughs> and then I and then I look over and I see her walk inside in the building with and, the baby. Uh, with mm-hmm. the baby. Mm-hmm. So even you so. thought she was gorgeous and sexy, or you was like, "This is she's crazy and I love her." Oh, I always thought she was very beautiful and stuff. But when I, you know, when I seen her, I was like, we caught eye can- contact, and I was like, "Okay, she bad." I was like, "What's up?" What did you think? She came in. Well, I thought he was really. Uh, I, I was. I wasn't liking the fact. That when I went in the studio, mm-hmm. right, and then because I ended up leaving Bonnie outside with my homegirl, because it was like a few rooms in the stu- in his studio, so I went in the back room with him, you know, to do what we do. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, I just thought he was like, damn, he's all up on me. Like, what the fuck? Like, I was liking him. He's all about so, me. What the fuck? So what I didn't want that? him to be all up on me because I, I was like, damn, he's yeah, cute. Yeah, I kept asking her questions. So and he was like, asking no, so me what, a lot of questions. Doing? I was like, nigga, like, what the fuck? You, know, you don't like when people ask you questions? Y'all that's saying? a good sign, though. That's, <laughs> that's, what guys are, sign. that's what guys are supposed to do, because they say a lot of times guys talk so much about themselves, they don't ask you questions about yourself. Yeah, I wanted to see what and that's a real on. sign of somebody being interested in you when they ask you a lot of questions. Well, when he was asking me questions, I was just like, he's getting on my nerves. But then I was still talking <laughs> I was still talking to him, and I was being nice, and I was like, okay, well, he seems like a nice guy. Uh-huh. So I kind of was like... That's kind of like, but I think we make a great partnership. He's he's amazing. He's really great. He has changed my life. So what was the first date, and how did you ask her out? Oh, uh, the first date was um, we went with Barton G's. That was yeah, like, that was like Barton the first G's. time Barton G's. Yeah, in we, Miami. Um, and I was really upset because there was like paparazzi there, and so I'm like, what are we eating and shit, all this flashing and shit going on. <laughs> mm-hmm. And stuff. That's and why he dodged me the first time we dated. We dated like I hated the camera. We dated hated a couple time. Yeah, back like, to back now for a couple you. of years. Oh, like, now, <laughs> uh, marriage boot camp. <laughs> I guess it was destiny. Right? Marriage boot camp, <laughs> Jocelyn's cabaret. So now how is co parenting? How are you dealing with cause now, you know, she has a, a kid and yeah. she has a, Well I knew Bonnie since she was six Bonnie. months. Mm-hmm. So I've been pretty much around mm-hmm. and stuff and it, it's really cool. Um Stevie cool, you know. You see me good. Yeah. So they hang out all the take, time. We take you know when he comes to the studio. How does that make you feel? To, I'm to going out with your baby dad, we're we going to chill. We're going to strip club. They be in the studio all the time. They be yeah. hanging out. I don't know what really? the hell they that's be doing. Dope. That's what you yeah. want though. Why that's you good. Like I guess that? he's married. Because, you guys are yeah. married. Shout out to Stevie and Faith. <laughs> and Faith, yeah. I don't know what the I don't know what they be doing. They be gone somewhere everywhere. Yeah, we go to the studio. Did you y'all cool right away? They might talk about you like you right away. Yeah, pretty much. I'm sure they do. pretty much just because I go off of her vibe. You know, if if to be honest, if she was like, fuck him, I probably would have been on the same shit just because right. it's whatever. You That's know what your wife. If he don't want to tighten up, then we're going, you know, but from the beginning, it was just, you know, I this love is this grown this stuff. I love this too, man. Because, look, did you ever think you'd be in a point where you could be cool with Stevie? Like that's your husband then? hanging out with him? Like that's dope. <laughs> but I mean back then, just because y'all relationship was so volatile and I know there were times that you just were like, Oh my God, like it was crazy. Did you ever in your mind envision we could actually be cool one day? Um I would have I, I was hoping so. Mm-hmm. I was I was praying so. And you know what? Everything I pray for and ask for I get. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't see it. Like I like I'm seeing it with my own eyes now, but I was hoping that we could become right. cool and be friends one day, mm-hmm. for many years. That's good. I'm glad to I hear like that. I like to see that. Now marriage boot camp. How does that? <laughs> so little Mo was up here because she did. Did she do? She did marriage boot camp, right? She did it last year. Last yeah, year. she did it last year. Mm-hmm. So you guys are on, and I know Styles P and Ajua are on this one because I saw they released everybody yeah, that's going to be ghost. on. Um, who else is on this season? Bianca Bianca King and Cilla. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. chose this uh, Bianca's and, um, dude. Michelle. 
Oh, this is a good hookup There's for music. There's something on my mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a well, good... Well, me and, me and, me and Silo are working on a song together. That's okay. what I was thinking. Uh, call uh, Mr. Nasty Man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm serious. I can yeah, see that, so. though. Silo be having them bangers. I yeah. <laughs> me and Silo are working on a song together. and put, Actually, his son started doing the track and sent it over to Ballista, so Ballista will be working on it. But uh, I love Silo. I think that he is my... So made musically, mm-hmm. we're so much alike. Right, yeah. I can. See I promise that. you, we're so much alike. Like we have such. We, yeah, I mean, yeah. we we hang out like mm-hmm. we're friends, mm-hmm. right? So he's just like, he's he's like a dream soulmate. If it was just he's musically. a musical genius, yeah, he is. Musically, with me and him, we were in the clouds the mm-hmm. whole time we was in this house. Right. Like I would just find myself attractive to his music powers, and we just end up being together. Him and. Silo's wifey got the same birthday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To get out of here. He's a Virgo too. They got yeah. the same birthday. Virgo, so. <laughs> What's the birthday? Uh, September 11th, okay. actually. Is she the 11th yeah. or the 12th? No, I she's, think she's a, 11th. Um, she the 12th, I think. She she might, she's day. the 11th or the 12th. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they have a really connection and we always used to joke and say, you guys will have the most boring relationship because they are so <laughs> calm. <laughs> okay. And everything is just so calm. And me and Silo like, hey, <laughs> let's party. <laughs> let's yeah. party. So it was pretty cool that we got yeah, that was the them. thoroughest show ever. I, I would do it again. Mm-hmm. It, so did it, was, did it help you guys with your relationship? Absolutely. Dr. Ish and Judge Tola were there. Dr. Ish is, is the most incredible. He's the best. Yeah, he's he's just a genius really? when it comes to, yeah. like to I, come, When it comes to helping you I would you love to your... talk to him every day. Right. Oh, my gosh. Like he's every the best. single day if I could, like, talk to him. Mm-hmm. I would he's talk awesome. to him every day. Now, you did, a, you did a, a long time ago, a couple years ago, you did a diss track to uh, Cardi B. Did you ever run into us? Why do everybody say that? That was not a diss track. That's <laughs> it's just my song. Hey me now. It's a song. I, they call it a diss track. All right. Have you seen Cardi? Have you spoke to her? Or? Listen, I see. I, you know. You know what's so crazy about me that I only see me. That's why I got the cabaret. <laughs> That's why I got Jocelyn's cabaret. That's <laughs> like, why back I to got promoting. That's why I got Jocelyn's cabaret. That's why I got what I got because I only yeah, see baby. me. You Talk know what I'm saying? Baby. Right. So do you give him a Christmas gift or do you give him a Christmas gift to give back to you on Christmas <laughs> since we you give each other you? gifts? Really. Give each other gifts. Yeah. You know what? We don't but we but we don't we don't dwell on Christmas so much though. Which I which yeah, I think we like, need to though. Mm-hmm. I think we need we to with the in baby. We're the Christmas spirit too tough. Right? Like we got a tree, a little tree. We got a little, little tree, one, we never we put, decorated the tree. We put uh Bonnie's <laughs> picture on the top and that was <laughs> and it. That was it. That was it And then we can't have the time really. I mean, it's we staying busy, so it's like, you know, which is which is a good thing, so you know, but next year we'll be in the Christmas spirit. We'll and then we came home and put a bunch of gifts under the trees for Bonnie and she just opened them up. And she's yeah. so sweet. You have to, you literally could buy her like a bottle of water and she's the happiest <laughs> so kid ever. So, yeah, How old is she? Really? She's three. She's three. just turned yeah. three. Wow. She's Bonnie actually Bella. a Christmas baby. New Year. She's on the 28th mm-hmm. of December. Gotcha. Oh, she's a Capricorn like me. <laughs> you a Capricorn? Yeah, January 3rd. <laughs> January 3rd? Yeah, her birthday is a few days before you. Capricorns are the best because we start the year and end the year. But I, like I love <laughs> Capricorns though. Every Capricorn that I've met, I'm like, they're really fucking awesome people. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're very practical and calm and chill I've never and loyal. Met, I've never met a Capricorn that I say, I hate that person. All right, we're good. I feel yeah, I love Capricorn. <laughs> What's your sign? I'm a Virgo. Oh, that's right. You're Virgo? You're Virgo, you're Virgo, you're Virgo brother. You're Virgo yeah. to what? Yeah. September 3rd. September 3rd. Oh, my September gosh. Third? I was going to say, please don't let it be 11. You no. thorough. But you're a Virgo. Regardless, I knew you le- you legendary, but you thorough, too. Oh, thank that you, man. Virgo. See, I didn't know you was a Virgo. I like so. your husband, man. He's a good guy, man. He's super He's thorough. He's awesome. I love Virgo. We keep on calling him your husband, but you're like, you have confirmed. She has it confirmed. Well, you got to watch the cabaret. Jocelyn's cabaret. Hey, what we gonna when we do make it official, mm-hmm. it's gonna be amazing. You guys will see. This okay. is you gonna have to follow this storyline because we have yes, a plan maybe. to go somewhere, and it's gonna be just amazing. Jason's cabaret debuts. It debuts. Da 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 da. <laughs> January two thousand and twenty. Oh my god. That's still so. You have to know the date though because you have to know the date. A- Listen, if you guys follow me and Jocelyn mm-hmm. on my IG and Miss Jocelyn on Twitter, I will let you know the exact date. But we do debut. Uh, January 2020. Okay. Right? So we only got like three weeks, maybe two and a half before so the month is over. So we're going to be dropping in the next uh, couple of weeks. So now what about uh, expanding the family? Any uh, conversations about that? Oh, for sure. He just looked at her like, we tried <laughs> this sure. morning. You'll see on the show, though. You'll see on the show. <laughs> the way he looked at you just now. <laughs> I mean, we, we almost got a date for it. We almost got, we found out check got married. There's no pregnancy rumors, is there? Pour her some shot of liquor right now. We yeah, don't make her drink no liquor. Oh, give me that. Man, you better we'll give me that. Some, you better give me that shot. What the hell wrong yeah, with you? We'll I'm take taking some that. Shot. Give me that. <laughs> what y'all got? Jocelyn, would you say this is the happiest you've ever been? I would say I would say that this is a happy 
I want to get happier, though. I, I'm going to tell you when I'm going to really be happy, when I'm, like, in my garden, growing my own fruits and vegetables, looking, my, looking at my flowers, just not having to entertain the whole wide world. They put a lot of pressure on me to entertain. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I prayed for for so many years, and you cannot, you know, detour. But I'm, I'm in a very happy space just because I can have control of my IP, my intellectual property. Right. And being able to have control of your intellectual property is very important for the community that where we come from. We are black, we're young, we're strong. We need to have IP ownership and we need to do it well. And we need to teach each other how to do that. And if you have a good content and you have good product, you should have ownership. So being able to have ownership of my own life and my own IP and, you know, my partner and my daughter and us working together, it's just a great feeling. That's right. the, You know, people joke sometimes about you, Jocelyn, because you're so loud, but that's what I respect. Like, when you came in, and the reason you do the cabaret shows, you want to teach these young ladies how to own their own and how to get in the game. That's what I think we don't do as much as minorities. We don't teach each other. We hold the information because we want it all to ourselves. Oh, my god! So the fact that, you know, you're trying to teach these young women how to get from point A to make it to point C to be successful, you know, uh, that's the reason I do the real estate, to try to teach people. And you should do the same thing with music, to teach people how to get in the game because most of us, we are so thirsty, we'll sign any deal, and then we make all these hits and we get no money. You know no I mean? money. Right? You know what I mean? So I love the fact that you're teaching these young ladies how to do it. That's that's dope. Well, you know, and nobody taught me how to do shit. Mm -hmm. I had to teach myself. I know a lot of people. I can give you an example right mm -hmm. now. I won't say a name, mm -hmm. but I know people that are sick, right, mm -hmm. internally. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you hold certain things, when you do certain things, when you go after certain people, when you don't give out good and positive and teach people, you get sick. Mm -hmm. I feel like... I feel like the the energy that we have to give to each other is good energy. Like we we shouldn't hate on each other. We could joke, we could laugh, we could ask questions, we could answer questions, we could kick it. But that's it. You know, you should be positive, you should teach each other, especially the colored people. We have it so hard. They they give us a really hard time. Mm -hmm. They use they use us, they throw us away. Like even for example, with me when I quit, it's going to take God to get down here, get rid of me. They didn't know I was going to come back with the cabaret. Right. Fuck y'all. What the fuck y'all think? Y'all think I'm just going to sit back, hold my hands, and time to the back? Hell no. I could suck my nuts, and I ain't even got nuts. <laughs> I'm going to focus. I'm going to focus, and I'm going to indulge and really tap in into what the fuck I always wanted to do. Right. You have to tap in, and we have to teach each other how to tap in. A lot of people just talk shit. Make it simple for the people. Mm -hmm. Make it simplicity. It's so good. Right. Tap in. Tap into your love. Tap into your worth. Tap into what you want to do, and you're going to become great. People really enjoy watching you on The Real, too. Oh, my gosh. Up. I had a great time doing yeah. the talk show. I know. You really enjoyed that. I feel like that might be something that you want to do for real, like have a talk show. You know, here's the thing. I, I'm going to retire at 45. Mm -hmm. Nobody will ever see me on TV <laughs> after 45. I'm 33. Mm -hmm. I just turned 33. I oh, had so, a birthday. Okay, you got plenty of time. Yeah, no, I had like 14 years. I had a birthday in November 3rd. It's my birthday, 1986. I just turned 33. I want to retire at 45. I've always told Ballistic that's my age to stop. Mm -hmm. I ain't entertaining nobody else. Fuck y'all. Kiss my black ass. Although I will say jungle. everybody says that until Grow they get to like 43. I see. You know, and then they're like, mm, maybe I'll do another stuff, six so. years. So. Just like, Here, here's the thing. <laughs> I, want to, I want to enjoy my kids. Right. I want to enjoy my grandkids. I want to enjoy. I want to, I want to reinvent myself at 45. At 45, you're not going to be a grandmother. We don't know that. <laughs> we don't know that. We're not going to be no grandmother 45. Well, Bonnie, Bonnie, when I'm 45, Bonnie's going to be how old? 18. 18. Look at Kylie. She had a baby at 18. I don't Listen, I'm not going to fight with my kid about what she wants to do. Well, you're going to be 45 12 years from now. I'm 33. Right. That's 12 years from now. Bonnie's not going to be 18. No, it's 15. 15. Right. 15, well, she's 14 she won't be ready, but, you know, at 18, 20, <laughs> I, I, you know, I still want I still want to watch my, I still want to watch my no, kids, I you, and I, I want to watch my grandkids, and I don't want to have to, I've been coming to see y'all here for the past seven, eight years, yeah. right? Right? Yep. I don't want to come see y'all when I'm 45 again here talking well, I don't, about something. I don't think we'll be here. You know? <laughs> you know what I mean? That would be chilling to watch my kids grow up. You know? You know what I mean? right. We you definitely will be here. Will. That's right. So, I, you know, I, I want to, I, I, I don't want to retire, but I kind of want to do something 
different. But I, and probably by though by that time, I'll probably be more focused on the Puerto Rican Princess Foundation and really focus on innovators. I want a lot of little girls that are innovators, like scientists and mm-hmm. you know doctors and lawyers. And you know, I'm gonna put all my focus in that because I want to help. I want these girls to be awesome. I can take 12 girls and make them great, the most smartest ladies in the whole wide world, so they can get to the moon and you know operate on people and give them another extra. 20, 30, 40 years in their life. There you mm-hmm. go. Oh, come on. How All better right. could you be? How better could you get? So that, let me ask you a question, right? This is my last question. Ballistic. Yeah. The <laughs> first time you got into an argument, right? Yeah. And Jocelyn told you to suck her nuts. Yeah. <laughs> what was your reply? Because I, I know she saw it. She said it twice up here already, so I know yeah, she, she said she it. hasn't said that. She hasn't said that, but when she she said that before, like, suck my nuts or whatever, or something, I'd be like, you don't got to But let's just not lie when I say that. Yeah, I'd be like, why you talk like that? Why don't you say suck, like, my dog, you know, why don't you suck my um my fiance's nuts or something. Or, I know. don't think she wants to tell people to <laughs> yeah, suck her like, fiance's nuts. That's yeah, just, whatever. I don't know. She has to ask you for consent. To but do I, do that. Come, I do come. I do come. I know. Just like, give me him. Yeah. Why are you saying that? That's like. And you, you from know. Philly? Yeah, I'm from Philly. Oh, so you see, you know, when you, when you say you suck your nuts to somebody, that's fighting words. So yeah, it's like what you talking. But she don't have any. I don't fight. I don't fight. Me and Ballista really don't fight. Nah, we really? don't fight. That's good. We try to laugh. Is this my phone? We laugh and you know. Oh yeah. That's what it is. Me, me and Ballista really don't fight. Because he's the calm one. So he is the calm one. You gotta and have the balance. I, don't, yeah. I think we don't fight because he's calm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Because I could get very... Buck. Suck my nutish. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just... When she tries to you know, call her auntie, I'll be like, come on, auntie, stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, she'll call me uncle, auntie. though. Okay, if uncle I do Ruther. say so, she'll be like, uncle. <laughs> Like, damn, uncle. No, we don't. Like, we, damn, I think we have a chill. pretty cool relationship. Though. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see what your relationship, how it plays out on marriage boot camp too. I'll be oh, yeah, cool. and Johnson and Johnson's 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 Cabaret, of course. Well, we appreciate. We don't know what date it starts exactly, well, but it's this we month sometime. Appreciate y'all for joining us. That's right. Johnson's Cabaret comes on when? What date? Jocelyn Scabaret <laughs> on Sue's January 2020. Okay. So right. listen, just everybody go to my page. Y'all see when that thing dropped, right. you know what I'm saying? Okay. But go download right now though. You, you need you need to go get your slot. Okay. For that cabaret. When I tell you it's gonna be some fireworks, this bitch is yo, envy. <laughs> envy, this bitch is saying this bitch is saying this I, bitch is saying. What day they, of the week does it drop? Sunday. Okay, on a Sunday. Okay, Sunday. so that gives us a couple of options. All right. <laughs> Sunday, All right. baby. All right, well, thank you guys for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having us, thank man. Thank you so much. Thanks Ballistic. for having thank us. You, thank you, man. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Mm-hmm.